we go. Recording started. Okie dokie. Right, let me just go and there we go. Get everywhere else, all good. And I am also on there. Let me just turn that off so I can't hear a bit echo. It's all very technical. <laughs> right uh, tonight is the big one guys this is the big question this is the big question why everything is magic why why is everything magic okay so the word magic the, the definition for the word magic that's with a k not a c uh there are many different very vague definitions for this word but essentially, it's it's a, it's a metaphysical construct, for want of a better word, uh, fluidic in nature, because the nature of magic is, as you'll find out through this talk, is, is fluidic. And it's also layers of ideas. So... Something that has definitely come out of our journey is this idea of fluidic thinking, which very much embraces this idea of everything is magic. Because it's always moving and changing and shifting and evolving. So what you get is if, if you uh, are rigid in your thinking, you're not going to be able to move with that fluidic energy, if you like. And this idea of layers so if you are looking at different ways different perspectives that you have of your reality then you can bring those things in you can put them on the shelf you can throw them in the bin there's and that that's what leads to this idea of fluidic thinking so i'll explain a little bit more about that as we go on but essentially so there are givens in this reality, in this particular reality that we are in, that we experience right now. So number one, everything is frequency. So if everything is frequency, if frequency is energy, it's another given really, if magic is energy, so stay with me, so think miracles yeah what are miracles i'm just adjusting my camera here because it sounds like it wonky um so miracles are what are they magic <laughs> which is energy so if you take all those things as ifs yeah the if then protocol if you like then everything is magic you with me so i could leave it there and then you know, go and have my dinner <laughs> but i'm not going to do that because they wouldn't be me it would be me if i didn't take that apart a little bit um so let's take it apart so the first thing is the kind of, the kind of magic that i'm talking about isn't the the stage magician illusion sleight of hand stuff which is more uh what the toxic magicians use they very much use the sleight of hand look over here look over here while they're doing something over there kind of thing um yes i'm not talking about the pull the wool over your eyes stuff what i am talking about is the at the tip of your fingers type magic yeah if you don't know what i mean by that I actually have uh, it's a it's a mini workshop. It's a three part uh, energy workshop, and in that three part energy workshop, you get to experience what that energy. It's like it's it's electromagnetic energy, yeah, that you get to feel. You feel it, and and if you do enough, if you do it enough times, the particular exercises that I show in this workshop you may even see it as well and i'll tell you what it looks like it looks like 
little sparkles yeah and i'll get to what they are in a minute um so what i what i will do is i will put there's a couple of links actually um so when the show's finished i when i post the the um what's the one i'm looking for the mp3 i will also post the link to the energy workshop and a link to something else which i'll get to a bit further down the line so this energy this energy is electromagnetic energy is you it's what it's your true nature if you like yeah i know some of you might be going what 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 <laughs> yeah this is the you know you could get into the uh the uh, sciencey kind of um the sine cosine euler's equation side of things which does back up this idea of everything is magic it's set, essentially it's the there's, there's a fractal nature of everything which is the continuation of energy the spiral if you like the spiral that weaves in and weaves back out it it expands and contracts like everything really uh, including nature nature does that nature does not die in the winter nature's already getting ready for spring in the winter if you look carefully she is doing that and it's awesome uh, and there's even a particle there is a particle which you might have heard of you might have heard of this particle which is called a neutrino and it's actually been talked about i actually heard someone talking about it today who i've never heard talk about this particle before um so although it's been it's been spoken about uh a bit more now it's actually been on their radar for a very long time and this particle neutrinos they travel faster than light is it apparently yeah but I'm, I'm going with this i like this uh jumps through space and time and affects changes in atomic structures now to me you know what that sounds like to me this sounds like a time traveling time lord a shape-shifting time lord <laughs> And it's this idea, got it, you know, sorry. Um, this idea that there are particles of light that we are made up of is explored in many different sci-fis. So the the one that springs to mind right now um, is the uh, Star Trek original series. And Kirk and his crew are sent to a planet uh, which is about to be invaded by the Klingons, and the leaders of this planet, they're you know they they smile a lot and they're not that bothered about Klingons and guns and stuff. And uh, it, Kirk's trying to go, come on, we need to you know protect you, you know we need to get guns and do some war. <laughs> and they're like, we don't need that. And they can't, of course, Kirk and his crew can't understand it, and. I don't want to. I don't want to do spoiler alerts, but essentially, these these uh, beings that are pure love uh, show their true nature at the end, and everyone's uh, everyone the Klingons and the Star Trek were. What was that? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> and I'm sure you could guess what that was. Um, but it's. I think what what sci-fi for me what sci-fi you know because i've been watching sci-fi since i was a very small child what it's done is it's opened my mind to the possibilities that we are more than these physical bodies yeah uh, and there is actually and again this is the other thing i'm going to link in with the other bits and pieces there is a peer review paper on neutrinos which i will also share it's very interesting so you know 
What does all this mean? What does it mean? What does it mean? <laughs> Now, how is this any use whatsoever? Because uh, it all sounds very fancy and very sciencey and not very practical, really. Uh, and I, 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 I do like a practical concept. I like, you know, does it do what it says on the tin? And if it doesn't, I throw the tin in the bin. Um, but there's a there's a saying, and it, it came up really oddly in a, you know, the Hallmark Christmas films. Uh, we, we don't watch those anymore because we don't have a, a, a TV box anymore. Um, but there was this saying, and it, these these yeah, teachings are everywhere. They're not just in spiritual things. They're they're all over the place. Um, but there was this there was this saying that came up in this film: when you change the way you see things, the things you see change. And that is it's essentially the. The idea of everything being magic is that you can change what you see. That's magic. So how we experience our world is very much determined by your perceptions and your perspectives. So some people would argue they're the same thing. Uh, I don't see it that way. I see it as your perspective is the place from where you see things, which is determined by your perceptions, which is how you see things. It's very subtle, very subtle. Uh, and interestingly, the prefix per means through. So through something is something else. <laughs> or <laughs> you might go eat your beer goggles. <laughs> so uh, a really good uh, example that I always use because it it's something that we love doing is hiking. Yeah, you know that could be five miles, it could be twenty, it could be flat, it could be the North Downs, it could be the South Downs. You know, it could be anywhere. Um. So in terms of perspective and perception, so you can be in the same geographical area. So you can be on the South Downs. Yeah. If you're in, if you're in the, in the bottom bit, in the valley, it looks very different to when you're halfway up the hillside, which looks different again to when you're at the top. Um, personally, I do not like hill climbs. Do not like it. My calf muscles scream. Um, I've recently adopted zero drop shoes, which makes them scream even more. <laughs> but because of what I know is at the top, I will, doesn't matter how many times I have to stop and rest, I will keep going until I get to the top because you get a massive shift in perspective. Massive. There is nothing like it. When you have broken through that resistance, you've moved through that resistance to, to, to reach that different perspective. So how, how, is, how is this magic? Because, <laughs> yeah, it would say, well, that's just, that's just climbing a hill, and <laughs> That's just moving from A to B. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, and Sometimes it can feel like moving the body from A to B is a lot easier than moving um, something metaphysical. So your perception, for example, from A to B, that can be a bit more of a challenge. Um, but when you think about it, your, if your perception is fed by your perspective, and your perspective is what shapes your reality. It it kind of it it, it has to be. Yeah, it's like there is no choice, especially now, because you know if you've ever experienced love or jealousy or anger, bliss, peace, any of those things that. 
uh, far you up, you know that those any of those feelings will colour everything else. It it tints everything. So I suppose the question to ask is what perspective or perceptions do you hold right now? And are there any that you want to flip? Are there any that you want to take to the top of that hill? Or leave down the bottom so you can actually see the bigger picture? And I think that's one of the things that I really like. You know, when you reach the top of the hill, is you can see, you can experience where you are, but you can see where you've come from and how far you've come, which for me is the only reason to look back is to say, okay, so it's a bit like, no, actually I'll get onto that bit in a minute. So when, when, you, when you're looking at how far you've come, is it's, you can appreciate that, you know, that you've, you've made that journey, which is, recognizing that in yourself is is again is is magic that you've made that journey is pure magic and then seeing the path of where you're going to or where you're aiming for at least even if it's a windy path you're still aiming for where you want to be um So yeah, what what's interesting about that question that I just asked was when I was going through my notes um, on this particular subject, uh, which I only tweaked back in 2022 when I was working with a client and she wanted to do this kind of work. I'm like, okay, so I'll just go through my notes and, you know, give them a little tweak if I needed to, because uh, we first started writing all this stuff down back in 2018. And what I realized so I tweaked them back in 2022 because I'm like, wow, we've 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 moved on our path since then, blimey. Um, and when I was going through these notes again, it's like it's happened again. It it wasn't that the notes that I, you know, tweaked in 2022 they weren't wrong. It's just our perceptions, our perspectives, have moved and changed and evolved which is something that I think you know we're, we're told that you know we if we have an opinion then we have to have that opinion forever and ever um, you know <laughs> until the end of time but if that's that's known as rigid thinking um which is not not our true nature when you look at, you know, just take nature as your teacher. She is not rigid in any way, shape or form. You know, even humongous trees move and bend in the wind. So, you know, nature is not rigid. So we are nature. So our very nature says that we are fluidic without question. Um So, uh, you know, there, there's an evolution there. And this evolution, which, you know, we're all experiencing right now. Definitely. That, that, is, that is a given. The planet, um, the planet, Earth, obviously. <laughs> Let's run another one. <laughs> um, ascended in 2012. And the you know what what we've been doing really is playing catch up. Um, so we are essentially what we're seeing now is the overlay of what we thought was a reality is is got big holes in it now <laughs> so when yeah you know, when we look at nature i don't know if you guys have experienced this i know we have and the people that we know have it's like in the celestine prophecy when everything gets really vivid the colors are really vivid 
even even without my yellow gl glasses on that I wear just to make everything really vivid so I get that experience it's even without those glasses on you know it, the, the colors the it's like everything is super super mega HD I don't know if you know any of you have been experiencing that but I know it's something that is definitely happening um and isn't that magic I defy anybody to say that is not magic. <laughs> so yeah, acknowledging um, the truth that everything is magic um, is what fuels this evolution of consciousness. So your own inner magic, your inner temple, and your immediate reality outside of yourself, your outer temple, is in this evolutionary stage right now. So your, your inner landscape is where it begins. It always begins with you because you are the magical creator being. You are neutrinos <laughs> you are light you are this being of love consciousness 432 hertz um so this frequency this frequency of your inner landscape you know it, it emits well, frequency is a waveform, sines and cosine waves, which is what Euler's equation is all about. Ian knows more about that than I do, to be quite frank. Um, but everything is waveforms, obviously. And frequency is no different. So when our inner frequency is rippling out, and then that returning wave comes back, of that frequency it brings back with it so you know this idea of law of attraction uh, i'm even reconsidering law of reflection because it's 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 more of a returning wave of your own frequency that you've put out that you know then ripples back and brings with it the things that are on that same frequency so it's not attraction it's not even really reflection. What would you say that is? That's a, a bouncing, if you like, the law of bouncing. I quite like that. <laughs> Get on your gym balls and have a bounce. <laughs> it's actually really good. Uh, it lifts your spirits, actually. If you're ever feeling a bit down, pump up a gym ball and have a bounce. Uh, I used to get people doing that all the time if they were feeling a bit crappy. It's like bouncing on the bed when you're a child. So, yeah, um, that idea of that frequency rippling back to you is very much um, described in that saying, as within, so without, as above, so below. So, you know, and nature does that. Nature, you know, as a witch, nature is our teacher. She's not our only teacher, but she is, she teaches us everything that we need to know. And in her expansiveness, in the expansiveness, which is nature, she creates and expands. I mean, I'm just looking at the trees out here. So a few years ago, um there was a tree that was that was not doing very well out there um and they weren't they weren't as full if that makes sense these past two or three years with the change of the light and the the frequencies that are coming through these trees all i can see out there is green and i could always see the houses across the road even in the summer so for me that is it's, it's like looking at a forest outside the window. It's amazing. <laughs> but that's the 
that expansiveness you know that creation that expansiveness um yes she contracts during the winter but she doesn't die there is no death there it's a contraction which then expands and then contracts so it's it's a it's a pulse it's a breathing it's a moving spiral if you like which again goes back to the idea of fractal nature of um this sacred geometry you know a spiral is uh, a pure <laughs> a pure magic a pure symbol of magic for for you know absolutely without question um so it's a circulation of creative energy essentially so it's a circulation of magic <laughs> So when we create, when you know we, we, we're called human beings, um, that's yeah you know, a, a bit of a rubbish label actually, <laughs> I would suggest. But when we create from a place of divinity, from a place of that pure love consciousness, from a four thirty two hertz from our connection to divine source energy, then that experience is very fluidic. It's very synchromistic, expansive, um, it, like super focused and yet super aware and yet not aware because everything falls away. When you are in, as they say, in the zone, everything else falls away and you become you become what it is that you are creating that's a very different experience to when we create from a place of fear or guilt or shame all those very dense um programs all those very dense thought forms so when that happens our, our true energetic force it, it's like it becomes distorted because it if something moves through density so if light moves through a prism it distorts if you're looking at a spoon in a glass of water it's distorted because it's moving through something that's denser than light that makes sense it makes sense to me um or is dense denser than the thing that the light is moving through is probably a better way of putting it so if we are creating through the density of fear guilt shame hate all those things that we are taught to embrace <laughs> then our end result of our creative endeavors is distorted and feels off or looks wonky or um people would say things like oh there's something about that that makes me feel weird you know that that kind of it has an energy to it that is not whole for one or better because it's been distorted does that make sense so we we know we know when something feels right in our gut if you like in our heart in our gut and um, but we also know when something feels very off and it can be a tiny little thing so what is that what is that that we are tapping into it's energy which is magic <laughs> so what is it that creates these distortions so back in 2022 i think it was 2022 uh there, i had a series of dreams which i will never forget uh one of them i met my higher self which was really funny because it was doing with a shoe it was a very bizarre <laughs> but there were a couple of others that I had 
that were around the nature of energy and how it works. And I was told, this is how everything works. I'm like, okay, what is it? <laughs> so the first one was this vessel. It was a clear vessel. And there was what looked like water moving through it. Not very fast. It was just moving through a steady pace. Uh, but the vessel was full of this energy, which looked like water that was moving through it. And it had no beginning and no end. But essentially, we are vessels for that energy that moves through us all the time. It's moving through us all the time. It doesn't stop. Yeah. And... I'm like, okay, so what am I supposed to do with that then? <laughs> uh, and what, what's interesting is that, you know, th this, um, there have been instances where things have come up and I go, oh, okay, so I can fit that in there. Okay, brilliant. Um, so that, that was just one, um, which, you know, if you go back to what, what are the givens? So everything is energy, frequency, light, neutrinos. So when you are when you are looking at when you can see energy, if you do the 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 um, mini workshop, you see these like flashes of light between your hands. For me, that's neutrinos. That's what you're seeing. You are literally seeing the, I, I nicknamed it the 5D particle, yeah? <laughs> but it's literally, you see it between your fingers. If you look at a tree or for, in a forest and you see that strange morphing, yeah? Sometimes it appears as light, sometimes it appears as like a, uh, like a, a moving haze or something like that. That's that's it. For me, that that's what the neutrinos are. Um, <laughs> even when you see light dancing on water, <laughs> that for me, that's neutrinos. They're showing themselves to you. And you might think that sounds tough. I actually quite like it because I have a little song that I sing to them as well. <laughs> so. Uh, so, yeah, everything is energy, frequency, light, neutrinos. These things are always in motion. Yeah. This energy is always moving through us. So, you know, if that's been supercharged by a solar flare or a coronal mass ejection or through other things that the sun is doing, then, you know, we are going through that. We are literally walking through those energies. Um but as it moves through us, so this is this is talking about the distortion. So as this energy is moving through us, if our vessel, so the vessel, the clear vessel, has any pockets of density in there, so I don't know, think of it like uh, a rock stuck to the side of a vessel yeah of a glass vessel so there's a rock stuck to it some some idiot has glued a rock to, to the inside of this vessel yeah and it, it creates havoc does it not as the energy moves through it distorts around that that thing that's glued to the side of the vessel yeah it literally makes waves it ripples around it or you could also think of it you know in a river if there's a rock in the middle of the river, the, the water has to, it kind of distorts around it. So it's not free flowing. That's how I see um, what happens if we hold on to, literally we're holding on to these dense things because we are afraid to let them go. Yeah. So I, I see it like a pinball machine. That was a very clear image I got. So as as this energy moves through our vessel, it pings and distorts off of these dense, these dense pieces of energy. Yeah. And it does. It it creates 
ripples and eddies and all sorts of things, which we then, the labels that we put on those are um, pain or discomfort, or we might actually label it with you know, a medical term. You know, Google is not your friend when it comes to that because, you know, you could have, you know, you'd be walking around post its all over yourself <laughs> with all the labels that, you know, we are told. You know, we need we need to do that because that's what that's called. Well, actually, I beg to differ. Um, because essentially all it is is something that we're holding on to so tightly we cannot let it go because if we let it go then what happens and that that's the thing what happens when we let go of that and you know it can be scary letting go of that stuff but if you are observing everything with magical eyes then you you will realize that not only what that is so energy dense energy that actually doesn't belong to me because that if we are beings of <laughs> greater beings of light you know that span you know many universes then uh what is this little thing glued to the side of my vessel what is that that's not mine <laughs> That belongs to someone else. So let's let let's let go of that shit, shall we? Literally. Um, so allowing the energy to pass through and and allow that energy because that energy that's moving through us is magic, is neutrinos, is you know, the stuff that stars are made of. It's not a whimpering thing in the corner. You know, it's the thing that everything's made out of. So it's going to be able to just, you know, give that a little nudge and take it with it as it moves through. So let it. Yes, it might feel a bit weird when it does that. You know, you might feel as it actually moves through. I've had that myself. I've actually felt it as something has you know and and it what it um kind of feels like um what does that feel like uh it can feel like a very sharp pain so for example sometimes i get that right in on my big toe right at the end of my big toe yeah it'd be a really sharp pain like someone stuck it with a knife yeah so all i do is i just move my foot so you might have to wiggle it around a bit until there's a clear exit point. Does that make sense? Sounds really weird, but try it. Because it's going to go down. The energy moves down, downward, yeah? So it's going to come out somehow through your feet or through other orifices. <laughs> so allow it, yeah? It doesn't always feel good to, you know, but allow it. Do it. Let it. Take it yeah that makes sense um so you can uh set an intention for that you know intention is 99 percent of universal law from where i'm standing um you can also use breath work to help you hold that space for that to move through and out yeah because you know you don't want that stuff anymore you really don't um also, you know, building that that energy of non-attachment. So in yogic terms, pratyahara, yeah, that non-attachment. So as this energy is moving through, if you can employ your breath work and place your body in a position where that energy just moves through you. And takes with it anything that you do not need. Yeah, it's it's very powerful. Um, creativity as well. If you can allow yourself to be in that magical, creative flow, then 
that's that's perfect <laughs> um also you know allowing and maybe setting an intention to allow yourself to connect to your true self and being guided allow yourself to be guided by that aspect of yourself um because it is not going to steer you wrong ever and also one of the big things and the thing that everyone is is <laughs> like some people are going yeah come on bring it on other people are going oh my god what is happening so when your biggest fear when your greatest fear gets in front of you and roars at you rears his ugly head and it's like oh my god uh just just know everyone everybody on the planet is having that same experience it looks different for every single one of us but we are all facing that right now because it's it'll be the thing that's been buried the longest in the deepest place because you haven't wanted to look at it <laughs> so you know now is the time if you were ever going to do that if you were ever going to look at that and just uh, acknowledge it and then call it a cab yeah Get, get an uber on it it's now because now we are supported by this energy of what people call ascension or expansion of consciousness there's not there's no better time yeah to do this work um this magical work this activating your your true nature your magical senses your magical eyes yeah um this is it i've already said that bit about pain didn't i that's that's interesting i jumped ahead and then jumped back again like a time lord <laughs> that's funny um do, 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 do. so yeah um that's weird. I did a lot of jumping around there without realizing what I was doing. <laughs> so yeah, that that was the other thing I was going to say about pain. So as this as this energy moves through, and you might get a pain, like for example, in my big toe, yeah, goes ah, and I'm like, ooh, okay, <laughs> holding a space for it. So witnessing it is essentially the same thing. So you witness it, you acknowledge that it's leaving and you witness it leaving. So you make sure it actually goes out the door and doesn't sneak back in as it's closing. Yeah. <laughs> Be aware of that. Um, essentially what you're doing, what, what that is, the energy of that is it's not fear. It's not hate it's it's a very neutral place that non-attachment it's a very powerful place to be able to and it's it's really challenging you know we've we've this past couple of years we've had some very challenging stuff um but essentially the place that we all always come back to is you know witnessing what is passing in front of our magical eyes and not allowing that to then leech into put its, you know get its tendrils into how you then want to create your reality or live your life as people would say yeah so when you are allowing that whatever it is to leave essentially you know because as, as it leaves it's going to make a big fuss it's going to throw a tantrum on its way out yeah because in the in so the physical body the way i see it physical body is the 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 density yeah this this is dense yeah so if something is le if something if you're feeling something in this dense body essentially 
it's that that's your call to say it is leaving yeah because it's going to come through you know your your aura your metaphor it's, it's like the princess and the pea so it it you know if you label it while it's out here somewhere then it's it's got permission to then manifest in your physical body and do its thing until you say okay out you go taxi um if that makes sense so instead of labeling this thing this pain as blah blah or what's it yeah and giving it permission to stay and emit its frequency that you yeah you know, oh that's the label there we go and we we all have done it because that's what we're taught to do because you know we talk that those people over there they've got a lot more to say about what that is than your toe angie yeah yep yeah, that's a blah blah what's it flimmy-majig and you go oh that's the label i'm gonna put a what's it whatever i said can't remember thingy magic label on that and oh then it starts to emit that blah blah it's magic see it's magic it spells it's words it's magic because that's what they use that's the toxic magician side of things yeah the it's how institutions work because they're all very rigid in how they do these things um they have lots of rules and instructions and very um set ways of doing things and the thing they don't like and if you've ever gone up against an institution and tried to say but you know um uh, i don't know what's an example uh oh i had that actually when i broke my wrist in 2019 and they were trying to give me drugs i'm like i don't want your drugs <laughs> i'm quite happy sitting here holding my wrist and giving it healing i don't need your drugs thank you very much and they, but they kept trying to do it uh and when i got in the room where they were tractioning it they said you sure you don't want any no so i'll just have a bit of gas and air thanks uh so i did my breathing techniques with gas and air i was pissing myself laughing they traction my wrist not a problem <laughs> but they kept trying to push those drugs on me it's like they really thought I needed those drugs. Like, no thanks, just give me a bit of gas there and I'll be fine. <laughs> so essentially, essentially, yeah. Um, it's saying, it's saying no to those labels. It's unlabeling the labels if you like <laughs> or or putting your own labels because you know labels and thought forms they're not all negative so you could actually reprogram yourself and stick a label on my you know I could stick a label on my big toe that says I am the creator and I allow this energy to move out of my big toe it's magic <laughs> so you know that that's what hypnotherapy is it's a, it's a way of um putting labels on that completely dispel now there's a cool word the labels the negative labels the dense labels that were on there before so yes um this is a do So the other thing about your creativity and how you work your magic is, if you like, is it will be unique to you, um, which is very, is the opposite. That's the flip side of, you know, you must do as you're told, dogma, rigid thinking, which is a magic of a different kind that's very it's, as i say it's very toxic magician magic and it's all very you know uh if you don't do as you're it's based in fear it's based in fear and shame and guilt you know and being very um polarized in in your perceptions and your perspectives uh, and, and you know that's that's the other thing that i was told in my um there were, there were two dreams they were one was 
if they were like um <laughs> two nights apart if that makes sense but one after the other it's probably a better way of saying it i i, I do speak english <laughs> just can't always get the words out properly um so the other one was no matter what happens stay open and i'm like well i don't even know what that means and and what but in, in my dream this was and they kept slapping my hand and saying no no matter what happens stay open and i'll be coming up with all these if buts and maybes and i get slapped on the hand and say no matter what happens stay open ah. so i was telling ian about this dream and it's like well um, i don't know what to say about that <laughs> kind of thing and i'm like oh, okay so what does that even mean and you know time passes by as it does and what i realized is that what that means it would mean anything but essentially for me what it means is stay open to all the possibilities because we are essentially the void space we are the void and the frequency that we emit then comes out of the void as a projection if that makes sense so stay open to all the possibilities to every possibility that can possibly happen and when those things fall away that don't belong to us that are dense when those things fall away you can bet your bottom that the things that are aligned to you will in literally <laughs> which is magic you know those instant and i've had in i've done instant heals on myself i have you know i'm sure you guys have been experiencing that those instant synchronicities that go like that they just and you're like i love it when people tell me those stories i love it because it tells me that 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 point that we're in at the moment that magical point where we're in the zero point energy that where everything is happening all at once right now is that's where it is that's what's happening right now and that's pure magic and that's everything everything so as you know as we walk this unfolding synchro mystic path following those signposts which you can illuminate if you want you can set that intention you know creating from our true frequency allowing those things to fall away that are not ours yeah and when that you know being receptive to the oh, to the amazingness that then follows behind it when that goes you know our inner and outer worlds then they shift and they shape our reality with these new perceptions and these new perspectives that we have which is shangri-la or summerlands or new earth or you know whatever that is that you want to call it which is magic which is why everything is magic <sighs> anyway um it's like it's like it's it's a kind of magic absolutely <laughs> it's that's, a kind that's of what magic. i'm reminded of it's a kind of magic <laughs> oh andy andy we want the full song <laughs> you have to post it andy you have to go and grab it and post it in the group <laughs> <laughs> the one thing um that resonated every well everything resonated with what you were saying angie and um, but the one thing that kept sort of popping into my head and sort of floating around was the invisible force field that we are all things have which is the taurus um yeah and the flow of that taurus energy will depict and depend when you were talking about the law of attraction and all the rest of it and reflection <clears throat> um a lot of that is dependent um whether you agree with the fact that it, it is attraction or whether it's reflection or whether it's something else the flow of your taurus if it flows out of the top of your head out and back through the bottom and up again um will attract certain things and if it flows the other way 
um, which I believe is the negative wave. If it, if, if it flows down, it's pulling your energy down to the earth, comes back up, and it's pulling it back through your head to continue that negative thing, which can be construed as depression or negative feelings or negative emotions. Whereas if it flows the other way, you're free of all of those things and it and it's positivity flowing out of your head back out back round and back up does that make any sense to your thought process uh i think there are two streams of it i think there are two or three streams of energy so we're, we're connected from father sky down from mother earth up which then for, for me that that kind of creates that electromagnetics at the heart so that that's that's two streams there and then you've got the toroidal field that kind of moves in and up and out and round um and then you've also got the um the ida and the pingala which cross and that's that's you know, how the serpent energy moves up through the spine so we've got so many <laughs> you know that's not even counting all the nardies that you've got all over your body all these you know little tiny you know wormholes essentially <laughs> all through you know your whole being we're 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 well i think we're more not than anything which is why i i, I consider that we are the void space because we are we are not just light we're also the void space which people would say is dark does that make sense yeah absolutely totally mm. anybody else wanna oh shalina's joined now as well um right well thank you for your show um That's i thought right. i'd just jump in before you stop the recording and uh just to make a little bit of a contribution <laughs> so, <laughs> I will I will let you sign off. I'll mute myself and uh, let you sign off. Cool. I shall stop the recording. Stop recording. Fantastic. <laughs>